Task Force 141, the most badass band of troops in the entire Call of Duty franchise, the best hand-picked group of warriors on the planet according to 141 manager General Shepard, and he's not one to lie so you know it must be true, right? Uh, <laughs> we've discussed at length the individual stories of 141 members Captain Price and Soap McTavish many a time and will continue to do so but in this video I wanted to take a look at the 141 as a whole and that's what we're going to do but also keep an eye out for a very special announcement during the video. Did you know Task Force 141 had at least 85 absolute demons in it that hail from the UK, the US, Canada and Australia? That's a lot more than the four soldiers that we fell in love with, Soap, Price, Ghost and Roach. Of course, there was also Joseph Allen who impressed General Shepard so much in the pit that he was drafted into an undercover mission to infiltrate the Russian ultranationalist cell. Yeah, we all know how that went, but there were loads of 141 members with well cool names like Driver, Rocket, Toad and Worm who's actually the guy who asks Okay, maybe their names could use some work, but it's not as if Soap was cool in the beginning as well. Ghost is definitely one of the better names and it's claimed by 141 member Simon Riley, who not only had to do various dangerous activities in his day-to-day -day life, but also voiced the lines that you hear when you're in Team 141 in multiplayer. Enemy AC 130, above. He's also sporting a balaclava with a skull on it, just in case you don't think he was intimidating enough while he's about to dish out some war crimes on your ass, which is actually what he's up to when we first get acquainted with Ghost. Either that or this guy's got a card battery where his boss should be and he's needing a jump start. Hmm, that's maybe why Shepard did what he did, because Ghost was so cheeky to him. Oh sorry, spoiler alert. Of course we know what other prominent Task Force 141 operative bit the dust that fateful day, Gary Sanderson. Who? Roach! Gary Roach Sanderson. He wasn't born Roach, but if he was born an actual Roach, he might have survived being set on... Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Roach is indeed the main playable character in Modern Warfare 2. His actions, his life, is our life. Wait, does that mean that we are all Roach? If I fall off the cliff first thing in Modern Warfare 2, is that Roach's story over? Funnily enough, that's the only time we hear Roach's voice, but what is canon here? What dimension are we in? Why am I having an existential crisis for real though? Roach does have a habit of falling off of things. Soap and his big sexy hands bail him, us, out from falling off the cliff again, but he has to bail himself out after botching this jump, which I think is one of the more easier death-defying manoeuvres 141 members pull off. Roach letting the side down for fuck's sake, but he does make up for it with a belter of a finale piece with this leap onto a helicopter ladder. Phew. The 141 show continues to the Gulag so they can be reunited with a former 141 band member Captain Price who has been busy working on his solo career for a while and isn't initially happy with the plans for another 141 world tour as he punches Roach square in the face upon seeing him. But then the band has a beautiful moment as they are. So, Price? This belongs to you sir. He just fucking had to ruin it worm, didn't you? Alas, the 141 is fully back together again. Well, apart from Joseph Allen, RIP. But with Soap, Price, Ghost and Roach at the peak of their powers, this seems like the best time to announce that you can show your respect for them with this t-shirt, the 141 immortalised in emoji form, just as they'd want to be. A hundred of these exclusive Marley 13 labelled t-shirts will be sold at Resonate in Glasgow from October 19th to the 21st, but worldwide fans who can't make the event fear not because you can get your own 141 t-shirt from Teespring right now. Links to both Teespring and Resonate tickets in the description with more info to come at the end of the video, but where were we? In possibly an effort to hype up their comeback tour, Captain Price oversteps the mark by blowing up the International Space Station. I may have mentioned that in the past as you can imagine this seriously pissed off band member Shepard, and in case you're wondering, yes I am going to talk as if Task Force 141 are a boy band for the rest of the video. Captain Price, 
Request permission to take the safe house with Roach. They were actually so popular they went on different tours and brought along a shit ton of supporting members with them. We have not, I repeat, we have not spotted Markarov, and no one else has left the house. Those trucks may have been decoys. Over. Who the fuck's Archer, by the way? And what is he contributing to the band? Is he playing the fucking triangle or something? I've not heard of him. They also recorded a new single which was actually straight fire. Okay, poor joke, let me try that again. They also recorded a new experimental album which was actually so shite that Shepard, the band manager, had to terminate Ghost and Roach and make sure that album is never released to the general public. A lot of people don't know that's why Shepard acted this way, but it must have been really bad to drive him to do that. Meanwhile, Soap and Price are just getting the news that the album did actually leak, and the public hate it so much that Task Force 141 is disavowed, and basically everyone is out to kill them. We know how this story goes though, Soap and Price sue Shepard for breach of contract, talks break down and eventually Soap has to stick a knife in Shepard's eye, it's a shame it got to that stage. Also shout out to the band's tour helicopter pilot Nikolai who's always helping out by the way. Fast forward a bit and with a new band member Yuri, Task Force 141 is trying once again to do a comeback tour, but they're hit with a bit of a snag when lead guitarist and heartthrob Soap McTavish dies during a pyrotechnic stunt gone wrong. It doesn't stop fellow Scotsman and new band manager bass plate McMillan from pursuing the world tour and saving the band's PR, and they actually do get themselves back on side with the public, and all it took was for them to rescue the Russian president and his daughter from a diamond mine. With their sights firmly set on securing the number one spot in the charts, 141 take on rival band Makarov and the ultranationalists. It's a hard fought battle with losses on both sides, including Yuri for the 141, but with support from the fans, Captain Price leads the 141 to a platinum wreck. What the fuck are you on about, Marley? I hope you enjoyed this alternative interpretation of Task Force 141 in Call of Duty, and if you did, please do leave a like on the video. Plus, if you're new around here and liked what you saw, be sure to hit that subscribe button, as well as the wee notification bell to join fellow Task Force 141 stands <laughs> like these two. Also, exclusive 141 t-shirts being sold at the Resonate Festival at the SECC in Glasgow. Only 100 of those available but also if you're not interested in buying one just come along to the event I'll have a booth there where I'm doing meet and greets and just hanging out and having a good time I'll also be playing youtubers at games on stage so yeah tickets linked in the description as well as the 141 t-shirt on teespring don't worry about the timer thing on teespring by the way it just means after three days the current orders are shipped and another three day cycle begins and I can't wait to see you rocking them have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video bye